Hello, Patreon supporters. Thanks for joining us for the spoiler talk for End of the Ocean by Matthew McBride. I don't feel like this is going to be a huge conversation, but there are some things that I'd really like to talk about. Yeah, like I didn't see this fucking book turning into, <laughs> into someone being scammed. And even as it was happening, I actually thought he was being scammed, like scammed in like he was being thrown under the bus for some reason, right, maybe like to like divert something. attention away from something else that was happening. And man, I did not see it going where it fucking went. That's for sure. Yeah, because there was like so there was two major twists and I loved the way. So the book plays out. And like as you would expect, where um, he's pinned all of his hopes to this one thing that is dangerous as hell, and it has to go wrong. Like that's the only way the book can go, right? Um, and then, like he's plucked from you know the maw of of like that the mouth of hell or whatever by Wayne Tender, who's who's he he's a government operative like i never saw this coming that it was a whole setup just to recruit him mm -hmm. to, to fight smugglers to recruit sage to fight smugglers um never saw it coming never. more so the the ingenuity in it is when you really start thinking you've got this like cia operative who causes this whole thing to go down and yeah he wants to recruit sage but ultimately, they have it go down so that they can bust some people mm -hmm. to kind of make an example of them. So it, it's essentially right. like we, here we'd call it an entrapment, right? If the police did it, like we set you up to do something just so we can arrest a bunch of people. <laughs> like, <laughs> so it's uh, but yeah, I didn't see that coming at, at all. And I got to tell you, as I was reading this and as it's coming down and he gets stopped at the airport. I didn't realize that I was that invested in the story. Yeah. Like at one point, man, I started like almost not feeling well. Like hundred percent. Like, oh agree. shit. Like there's no way he's getting out of this. This book is gonna go down with this guy getting fucking executed. Yep. And uh which which honestly would have would have also been a good ending in in arguably maybe a better ending in in just seeing him you know actually go down for doing this dumb thing um it, it would have been also a surprising ending because we always kind of expect our protagonists to get out relatively unscathed um but it was so surprising how this went down that i got to give it that you know kind of not gonna mention on the regular podcast but that kind of like nice job twist ending you yeah. know yeah and honestly reading i read the physical copy of this book um it's so down to the wire when this twist happens that it's like it, 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 I think it amplifies what you were saying, how you're like, Oh shit, he's going down and he's going to die because it's like, you know, 10 pages left in, in a 260 page book. And it's like, well, how much can happen in the, in those small pages? So it was very, uh, it, it gave me some anxiety, um, which I thought was great. Uh, but then there was the other twist. So, they kind of so I love the way that they basically, like you said, made it go down where um, all this shit happens. And they basically say, oh, he, the smuggler, he's our guy. So he's not he's not one of the bad guys. And that's how they get him out of it in order to take down the other people. That was really clever. Um, but then the other twist that I, I after this twist, I was probably reeling from the first twist that I didn't ever expect that Wayne would give Sage the option to reconnect with Rotri after this. Yeah, that was all a little. That was all a little weird. Um, I don't. I don't have an opinion on it. If I'm being honest, <laughs> um, it was one of those things where you figured it, that the option would be stay in prison or work for us. Right, that would like, be the leverage, yeah. Yeah, versus the, yeah, we'll just put you on a fucking plane and send you back home where you could talk to anybody about what we just fucking pulled off in Bali. Right. You know, so, um, but yeah, that is a, that is an interesting, and I, I mean, so ultimately, I think Wayne really liked him a lot. Yeah, he knew and, that and he I was think doing that, a bad yeah. thing to a good guy. Yep, yeah. Um, but it's funny, too, that his name isn't Sage, that he tried to, like, fucking reinvent right. himself <laughs> after getting cucked at home, right? Yeah. And and can I tell you that there's that part where he's like, 
you know, I came to Bali because this was always her dream trip and I kind of want to send her a postcard. I'm thinking, dude, she fucking moved on. Like sending her a postcard that you went to Bali because that was her thing is probably the like lamest fucking thing you could do at this point. It's a very cucky response, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so, but you know what? But that's fitting because I think that might be the kind of thing that someone like that would think. Um, you know, I'll show her when, you know, she's getting getting down with uh, the dude she was stepping out on you with. Stepping out. Yeah. And that's, but it fits the character well. Like, he, like, because so fresh out of uh, what was uh, described in the book as a 10 year relationship. Um, where it's obvious that this dude allowed himself to be defined by the woman. He's, he's going to make choices that are still defined that way until he can kind of define himself. So like going to Bali is consistent with the character because that's, that's the world he knows, but yeah. And and it made me feel bad for him, you know, like it made me feel like, Oh, poor dude. I wish, I wish he was not screwed over so much. Yeah. No kidding. Um, pretty fucked up though how they took out all the smugglers, man. Like everyone got murdered. <laughs> that was the other thing is like we we see Sage out in Thailand just kind of bumbling around with weird Thai Thai people mm-hmm. while like a very efficient like cleanup uh murder cleanup of everything that's been going on in Bali happens and it's like, oh man, that amped up a lot of the tension too in the book was like that you knew that there was a bullet with Sage's name on it. At least you thought you did. Yeah. It's interesting to think, I mean, I have to imagine, um, that things like this go on. Sure. Where, you know, people from our government are, are making little things happen in other places in exchange for favors, uh, you know, and, and they, but it's, it's kind of scary to think that as a guy like Sage, that you could get looped into something like that. Yeah. Like I always in my head think, oh, it's the CIA and then they recruit someone that's that's already kind of getting fucked to, you know, inform on someone else kind of, th- you know what I mean? But yeah. here's Sage just like got this relationship had to Bali for, for a few weeks and he gets sucked into this, you know, having to go to Thailand and smuggle back what he thinks are diamonds, but turns out to be fucking heroin. Then they throw him in that fucking prison for a few days, no less. Yeah. Uh, it's fucking terrifying, man. Yeah, it. it <laughs> I'm going to bring this up because I've been thinking of it. I'm going to bring it up in spoiler talk because I think it would be too spoilery to talk about it in the normal wrap ups. This twist at the end gives me a total. Uh, it reminds me a lot of a movie that I don't know if you've seen or not. Have you seen the movie Swordfish? You know, I vaguely remember Swordfish. Like I saw it when it came out. I have very little recollection of it. So Hugh Jackman, John Travolta, uh, Halle Berry. The thing that it reminds me of is um, kind of well. First of all, the the strong nature with which the secret government people act to to, to people, like this straight up murder and stuff like that. But the whole like shadow government agency that um, kind of operates outside the law to take down criminals. Like, he was basically a terrorist that was just a worse terrorist than the terrorist that he was taking down. That's the whole John Travolta thing in that movie. And it just kind of reminded me, Wayne Tender basically um, was the king of a smuggling ring in order to take down smugglers. So it was just an interesting kind of take on how to enforce law. Mm -hmm. That scene... When fucking Sage is high on mushrooms, that, that whole fucking chapter, <laughs> fucking amazing. Where fucking Wayne comes up on him and he's like, he's like, the monkey has your phone. How do you get your phone? And he's like, oh, I thought he needed to call somebody. <laughs> like, yeah. fucking, it's just amazing, amazing stuff. That's why I don't fuck with shit like that. Because I'd totally be the guy talking to monkeys. You would be giving your phone to a monkey? For yeah. absolute certain, without a doubt. That's uh, yeah. why drugs scare me. Yep. Well, and that's that was the surprising thing is that mushrooms are fully legal. You can just get a mushroom milkshake in a in a bar, but yeah. you can't you can't smoke weed. Yeah, that was a little weird. The only thing I could think of is like mushrooms are actually a food. You know what I mean? So maybe they have a weird thing like 
I don't it might know. have I, religious significance too. Like maybe they trip for be. for religion or something in, in Bali or who knows. Could be. Can I tell you though that that monkey forest is actually a real thing? I know I told you before the podcast that I watched a little, little ten things to do while yeah. you're in Bali, and that was on the list. So that's a legit place where there are just a bunch of fucking monkeys hanging around. That we've talked about this before, right? About how I would never touch a monkey. Oh, oh I think we should talk about it now. I feel like. I feel like um, I feel like when we were doing one of our lazy summer podcasts, where we were just like scraping the barrel, I, <laughs> I I talked at length about not wanting to get monkey virus, monkey diseases, um, because there was a monkey that was in my uh, place of work one time, and everybody was all excited to touch yep. the monkey, and I was just horrified. Like, did did like your parents never teach you anything? Like, why would you touch, like you know this disease ridden filthy thing why would you want to touch the and like it uh so yeah a whole forest full of these things you know they're running around with syphilis and stuff like that right they have to be i don't i don't know if they get syphilis i mean <laughs> I, you could probably give them syphilis but you could probably have to touch them to do it and have syphilis uh yeah. <laughs> uh well koalas have syphilis so it's 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 For not real? A, yeah it's not a human why do you even know this i oh someone's talking about dude is koala. that how people is that how people got syphilis so someone fucking a koala <laughs> someone at some point banged a koala um hang on i have to look up koalas now just to make sure that like i'm gonna search koala syphilis this should have totally been on regular booked you may have to <laughs> uh oh i'm wrong it's it's chlamydia Oh, well, all right. That's close enough. <laughs> I found a, a an article on Live, Live Science called Why the Heck Do So Many Koalas Have Chlamydia? <laughs> I, again, I have an idea on how that happens. It's just a really disturbing idea. Uh, it, oh, you know what? Someone made me read this thing about, like, koalas and how, like, they're just a dumb species because all they, all they eat is, like, eucalyptus, right? Mm-hmm which has no nutritional value and it gives them diarrhea and they, all they do is sleep and, and shit and fuck. It, it's, it's just really weird. But anyway, that's, that's chlamydia. It was chlamydia, not syphilis, but still, I bet you a monkey could get, maybe the monkeys having sex with the koala bear and that's how they all get chlamydia in the forest. And I'm not going to touch them. <laughs> it's a, it's a strange world out there, right? That, that's one thing that's true. Ugh. All right. Thank you for listening to Spoiler Talk for the end of the ocean. Thank you for be, being a valued Patreon. Thank you for supporting this podcast. We love you guys. We love you more than we love the regular listeners. Just don't tell them that. Make them pay a dollar a month to find that out.